A pleasant day to everyone. Today, we're going to discuss about electricity. So way back in our previous discussion, I already discussed to you how does these subatomic particles contribute in our lesson, which is all about electricity. Just a recall, when we are talking about subatomic particles, when there is an equal number of protons and electrons, we call this class as neutral atom, wherein they are known to be uncharged and pareho yung number ng protons and electrons nila. And kapag nagkaroon ng variation naman sa number ng electrons and protons, we call this now atom as an ion or known to be the charged atom. So, ang anions natin can be classified into two. We have the cations and the anions. So, cations have positive charge, while the anions has a negative charge. And in terms of the charge unit of measurement, so electrons and protons have the same value but different in sign. So, for electrons, we have negative 1.6 times 10 raised to 9 column, while for the protons, we have positive 1.6 times 10 raised to negative 9 column. So these are the unit and the measurement for the charge of our atom. And bear in mind that different or unlike charge attracts and same and like charge repel. On how to transfer electric charge, so meron tayong different ways. So una is charging by rubbing. So pag pinag-usapan ng charging by rubbing, we have here when two materials are rubbed against each other, electrons are transferred from one another. So one loses electrons while the other one gains electrons. So these are examples na ginagawa natin in everyday life that shows the transfer of electrons by direct contact. And these are the materials that can be used to do this direct contact charging. And I have here four sets of pictures. So let's try to analyze it. So I have here the copper wire, a pan, pendant, and the mittens. So which of the four doesn't belong to the group? If your answer is the kitchen mittens, you are correct. Because the other three, the copper wire, yung pan, and the pendant, they are known to be conductors. So, pag sinabing conductors, these are the materials that allow the electricity to flow. Okay, let's have another set of pictures. So, we have the slippers, the gold bars, the table, and the jacket. So, which of the four image doesn't belong to the group? If your answer is gold, you are correct because the other three are known to be insulators. Insulators are materials which doesn't allow the flow of electrons. Kaya tayo hindi nakokuryente minsan kasi yung ibang materials na ginagamit natin ay insulated or nababalutan ng mga insulate, insulating material. So aside doon sa dalawang first two materials that we have, which is the conductor and insulators, we can transfer electrons based on the type of materials are known to be the electron affinity. So, conductors allows the flow of electrons, so wala siyang hinihindian. So, all of the metallic elements are examples of conductors. Another is insulators. So when we are talking about insulators, these are the materials which doesn't allow the flow of electrons, like rubber, plastic, paper, glass, and air. And semiconductors naman, these are may or may not allow the flow of electrons. And for the superconductor, conductors, we have here the no resistance to the flow of electric charge at very low temperature. Example of this is the ceramic and the copper oxide. Just a trivia, most of our electronic gadgets nowadays compose of semiconducting materials because it allows some of the electrons to flow on it and at the same time, it breaks or doesn't allow the other electrons to flow on that certain gadgets or electronic devices. Okay, I have here the image of Ohm, Amp, and Volt. So these are the main three special characters in our Ohm's Law. So when we are talking about Ohm's Law, you have here volts, which is for the voltage. So as you can see, what is volt trying to do with ampere? So shame to mutulak. So voltage is the one responsible in pressing or allowing the flow of elect 
electrons to flow on that certain cord or wirings. Well, si ohms naman, siya yung tinatawag nating resistors or mga resistance. Resistance or capital R, which is a symbol of ohm. So, for voltage, we have V. Yan. So, niri-resist niya yung flow ng too much electricity doon sa mga wirings. Kasi nga, gaya na sabi ko sa inyo kanina, hindi pwedeng lahat ng electrons ay mag-flow ng sabay-sabay. So, kailangan natin ng mga resistors sa mga gadgets natin. And si ampere naman, since it is being pushed by the voltage, so we can say this is the current that is flowing. That makes the materials that we have like cell phones or the other gadgets that we have like televisions to work. So, it is the one responsible to the flow of electricity to our household devices. So, I is for the current and it has a unit of A which is the ampere. So, let's identify first the different electrical quantities and let's be familiarized with them. So, first we have the current. So, our current are known to be the flow of charges or electrons in specific direction. So, ito yung responsible kung saan gumagana yung mga appliances natin. And it is measured by ampere and it is coined after Andre Marie Ampere. And aside from it, we can solve that current using this formula, which is Q over T, wherein your Q is the charge, whether it is positive or negative, and the unit of it is column. And your T is your time, which is in second. So there are two kinds of flow of current. So we have the alternating current and the direct current. So based on the definition, when we are talking about alternating current, so these are the current periodically reverses its direction, as you can see in this picture. While the direct current, so current continues to flow at the same direction. Second, we have voltage. So, si voltage naman, siya yung electric pressure that causes the current to flow and also known to be electromotive force or potential difference. So, pag nakita yung term na electromotive force or potential difference, it is also the same with voltage. And other formula for voltage aside from the Ohm's law, you can use V is equal to your work done over your charge. So, therefore, the unit of measurement since your W is work, so, that is in Joule. And your Q is your charge. So, that is in Coulomb. So, therefore, we can say that the unit for voltage can be Joule per Coulomb also. And measured in voltage after Alessandro Volta. So, si Alessandro Volta yung responsible din sa unit ng voltage natin. The third electrical quantity that you must remember is the resistance. Resistance is the opposition of the materials to current and it's represented by the symbol R. The unit for resistance is Ohm after George Simon Ohm. What are the factors that we must consider in terms of the amount of resistance? First, we have the length. Here the description that the longer the conductor, the greater the resistance. And in terms of the cross-sectional area, the large the cross-sectional area or the thickness of the conductor, the less resistance it has to the charge flow. Third is the type of materials. Generally, measure of the resistance and the substance is resistivity or the raw in Greek term. And temperature is the greater molecular motion that tend to produce a higher resistance. So, meaning to say, mas mainit, so mas ma taas ang resistance compared if that is if it is colder. Okay, some trivia. Human bodies resist when the skin is dry at 500,000 ohms while when we are wet or when the body of human body is wet so we only resist with 100 ohms. And resistance can be solved using the formula rho times the length over the area. Ohm's law is coined after George Simon Ohm, wherein it shows the relationship among the fundamental electrical quantities of current, voltage, and resistance. So here are the formula for the Ohm's law. So for the Ohm's law, we can solve 
voltage by using the triangular formula wherein R times I is equal to the voltage. And for the resistance, you just divide voltage by the given current. And if the unknown is the current, which is the I, you can just divide voltage to resistance. And aside from this, we have we can solve the unknown using the formula for power. So power can be solved in three different ways. If you want to use the current and voltage, or if the given is the current and voltage, you can use the current times the voltage. If the given quantity is the resistance and the current, you can use I squared times the resistance. And for the po po power to be solved using voltage and resistance, you use V squared over R. Let's try to solve some sample problems under Ohm's law. First one is, how much current flow through a lamp with a resistance of 125 ohms when it is connected to 110 volt outlet? So let's identify the given. So for the given, we have here the following. So we have the resistance of 125 ohms and also the voltage which is 110 volts. So find the current, so letter I. So for using the formula in the ohms a while ago, we can solve current using the formula I is equal to voltage over the resistance so substituting the value so we have here 110 volts over 125 ohms we have 110 divided by 125 the answer is, is 0 0.88 ampere So following the SF rule, since our least SF is two digits, so our answer is already the final answer. Let's try another example. For this example, let's try to read the problem first. So what is the resistance of a lamp which allows 0 0.55 ampere current when 220 volts is applied to it? So for our given, we have here the current which is 0 0.55 ampere and the voltage of 220 volts so find resistance so pinapahanap si resistance so therefore under the ohm's law you can use r is equal to voltage over the current which is in ampere Okay, so we have here R is equal to V over R over I. So let's substitute. So we have here R. So we have 220 volts over 0 0.55 ampere. So simplifying this, we have 220 divided by 0 0.55. We have 400 ohms as our resistance. So that is the value for the resistance. But if we're going to follow the SF rule, since our list is 2SF, you can use the scientific notation form of your final answer. So R is equal to 4.0 times 10 raised to 2 ohms. So this will be your answer if we're going to follow the SF rule. So let's have example number 3. For example number 3, so what is the voltage of an electric hot plate? which draws 8.5 ampere from the line when it's hot resistance is 350 ohms. So here, let's identify the given. So our given here, we have the current, which is 8.5 ampere, and the resistance, which is 350 ohms. So find the, velo the voltage. So voltage is the unknown, so V is equal to I times the R. So substituting V times I, which is the current times the resistance, then 8.5 ampere times 350 ohms, 
So your answer, your computed answer will be 2,975 volts. So this will be the answer for this. But following the SF rule to SF tayo, so therefore, your final answer will be 3.0 times 10 raised to 3 volts. So that will be your final answer. Okay, let's have another example. Number four. So what is the power input to an electric heater that draws 2.5 ampere from 220 volts outlet? So dito, we're going to solve for the power. And the unit per power is what? So first, identify muna natin yung given. So for the given, we have here the current which is 2.5 ampere. And the voltage of 220 volts. So, find the power. So, based on our given, we can solve power using the formula P is equal to IV. Then, substitute natin. So, we have 2.5 volts. Oops, ampere rather. Then multiply that by 220 volts. So the answer will be 2.5 times 220. So the answer will be 550 watts. Or sometimes you can use P is equal to 550 then W as the unit for watts. Since to SF tayo, so pasok ni answer natin. Tama na yan. So for this example, the given will be power and the resistance. So therefore, let's try to read first the problem. So the power output of a heater is 450 watts. So how much current is flowing through it if it has a resistance of 130 ohms? So identify natin yung given. For the given, we have the following. So we have here the power, which is 450 watts. And our resistance of 130 ohms. So, pinapahanap dito ay yung current. So, therefore, find I. So, based on the formula, we can solve the current using the formula P is equal to I squared times R. But since we are looking for the current, so therefore, we're going to derive the formula. So, here, P is equal to I squared over R. Divide both sides first by R. Para makancel siya on this side. Yan. Then I squared is equal to your P over R. But since we're looking for the current, hindi naman yung squared niya. So we will extract and square it on both sides. So your I now is equal to the square root of P over R. Substitute natin. So we have square root of 450 watts divided by 130 ohms. So, 450 divided by 130 and extract the square root. So, the answer will be 1.86. So, our current is equal to 1.86 ampere. And following the SF rule, our least SF in our given is 2 SF. So, therefore, our final answer will be 1.9 ampere. So that's the end of my discussion for this lesson. So I hope you learned something new and good luck to your quiz next meeting. So thank you and please subscribe to my channel. God bless.